What's up everybody, Landon with LMR.com. In this video, I'm gonna be upgrading the brake rotors and pads on our 2015 Mustang GT shop car. I'm gonna be talking about the rotors I'm gonna use, the pads I'm gonna use, as well as how you get them on the car. Like most of our cars here at LMR.com, we drive them and we drive them pretty dang hard. After three and a half years of high performance open driving events with our 2015 GT, it was time to upgrade the brake components. For the brake rotors, I'm going with Centrix drilled and slotted offering for both the front and the rear. The drilled and slotted design will provide better pad bite and faster heat dissipation. Each rotor features a CNC machine surfaced and a corrosion resistant coating. Centric currently offers this brake rotor for the V6, EcoBoost, and GT models, of course, with the standard issue brakes or the EcoBoost and GT trims that have the performance pack option. This particular rotor is currently unavailable and will not fit the GT350 or GT350R Mustangs. Now, the particular brake pad I'm going to be going with is Hawk Performance's Street Race Pad. This pad is going to incorporate their Street Race compound, which is perfect for street cars that see a lot of track time. This particular compound has a great operating temperature of 100 to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, which will help maintain great pedal feel. Because of the aggressive compound, expect to see an increase of brake dust accumulate on your wheels. Now that all the ins and outs are covered on the particular parts we're going to be using, let's get them on the car. To begin the install, support the car via a lift or jack stands. Go ahead and remove all four wheels. Starting at the front of the car, locate the two pad pins. Use a small drift and hammer to carefully drive out the pins. Fully remove the bottom pin to release tension. Lift up on the cross spring. Remove the top pin followed by the cross spring. On the back side of the caliper, loosen but do not fully remove the 13 millimeter retaining bolt. Tap the head of the bolt to release the support pin. Now you can fully remove the bolt and slide out the support pin. Carefully pry the pads away from the rotor. We use a set of snap ring pliers and a flathead screwdriver. Remove each pad and make note of which side had the tab. Reinstall a lug nut to prevent the rotor from moving. Before removing the caliper, take this time to tie it off with some zip ties. Remove the two 15 millimeter caliper to spindle retaining nuts. Remove the caliper from the rotor and position it out of the way. Remove the lug nut and then tap the brake rotor with the dead blow to free it from the hub. Now you can remove the brake rotor from the hub. Clean the mounting surface on the hub assembly and apply some anti-seize. Before installing the new rotor, make sure you have the correct side. Thoroughly clean both surfaces to remove any machine oils. Install the new rotor and then reinstall one of the lugs. Reposition the brake caliper over the rotor. Reinstall the caliper to spindle retaining nuts and fully tighten. Cut and remove the zip ties. Use the supplied grease from Hawk and apply a thin film to the outer edge of the brake pads. Install each pad into the caliper. Make note of the tab and install it the same way as the factory pad. Slide the support pin through the caliper and reinstall the bolt. Fully tighten the 13 millimeter bolt. Slide the top pad pin into place and position the cross spring into place. Push down on the cross spring to slide the bottom pin all the way through. Carefully tap each pin to fully seat them. Remove the lug nut and apply any seize to the head of the rotor as shown. Repeat these steps for the other side. Moving to the rear of the car. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt securing the emergency brake cable retaining clip to the knuckle. Loosen and remove the 10 millimeter bolt securing the brake hose bracket to the sway bar. Loosen and remove the two 14 millimeter bolts securing the caliper to the slide pins. Remove the caliper and hang it by the emergency brake cable. Remove the inner and outer pads. Make a note of pad orientation. Install a lug nut to keep the rotor from moving. Loosen and remove the two 18 millimeter bolts, securing the caliper bracket to the knuckle. Remove the lug nut and strike the rotor with a dead blow to free the rotor from the hub. Go ahead and take this time to clean the hub. Apply anti-seize to the hub where the brake rotor will sit. Clean the front and back side of the rotor with brake clean to remove any machine oil. Install the correct rotor over the hub and reinstall the lug nut. Clean the anti-rattle clips. Apply a thin film of the provided grease from Hawk to the anti-rattle clips. Reposition the caliper bracket and start the two bolts by hand. Go ahead and fully tighten. 
Install the brake pads into the bracket in their correct orientation. Before reinstalling the caliper, use a brake caliper piston compressor tool to properly compress the rear piston. We currently sell the one shown at LMR.com. Compress the piston until the triangular notches in the piston are even with the opening in the top of the caliper. This will ensure proper emergency brake functionality. Position the caliper over the pads and align the flat on the slide pin with the caliper. Thread the two bolts in by hand and then fully tighten. Reinstall the two 10 millimeter bolts removed previously. Remove the lug nut. Apply anti-seat to the rotor hat near the hub. Repeat these same steps for the other side. At this time, you can reinstall your wheels, you get the car on the ground, and then you can torque the lug nuts to spec. Hop inside the car and lightly pump the brake pedal a few times until the pedal becomes firm. Once that's complete, you're all finished. Wrapping things up here, guys, replacing the brake rotors and pads on the S550, well, it's rather satisfying, to tell you the truth. The process is pretty straightforward and should only take you a few hours from start to finish. When you finish installing your new rotors and pads, be sure and follow Hawk Performance's bed-in or burnishing procedure to properly break in both components. Failure to do this can and will cause premature brake wear, and you're gonna be replacing these brand new components sooner than you should. To see more how-to and review videos covering industry-leading products, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this video, and don't forget to turn on notifications. While you're at it, be sure and check out our other videos, and don't forget to shop LMR.com for all things 1979 to present Mustang, and SVT Lightning.